Welcome to OSM Operation Safe Mode. Peace be with you. Uh, this is my weekly update on my health and my spiritual well-being. And today I'm really happy to be with you because I just had my scans on Monday and we received some uh, really good news. Uh, in order for me to explain it to you, I would like just to read to you uh, what was sent to me after uh, the scans were complete. The impression of the scans. Interval decrease in size of the mass within the head of the pancreas, as well as multiple liver metastasis since July 9th, 2021, indicating favorable response to treatment. No evidence of new metastatic disease to the chest, abdomen, or pelvis. So what does that mean? Well, to be honest with you, uh, when I saw this first impression, I was kind of a little bit discouraged. Uh, I really was praying, as all of us have been praying really hard for that, that big miracle. I was hoping that they would say that there was no tumors to be found, uh, but that's not the reality of, of where we are. So backing up and seeing, most importantly, that it's a favorable response to the chemotherapy. Uh, that the tumors that were, are present um, have shrunk. Uh, some of them in the liver have shrunk uh, up to 50%. And more importantly, there has been no spread of cancer to any other organs or the chest. So that means obviously that it's been still contained in the tumors that were there from July. And what we're seeing is the result of the chemo and how it is approaching uh, those tumors. When I spoke to a few different people, uh, a doctor friend said that um, mostly after six treatments, all they're hoping for after the first six treatments is that there is no more growth or spread. They don't expect the chemo to not only stop the growth of those tumors and also decrease them in size is that miracle that you know, we've been praying for, and it is a favorable result. I am most thrilled, though, that nothing has spread to anywhere else. And that, to me, gives me the great hope of that we're going to be focusing in, in the future, uh, basically on the tumors that are there, and to approach that from the perspective, instead of it being somewhere where we have to chase after and do different things. So. When, when I first got the news, it was kind of disappointing that quite quickly I, I rallied back to realizing uh, a very important fact. And that is that when we pray, we don't pray to false gods. We don't pray to idols who give us our answers. You know, I always tell you, don't believe in a God that doesn't exist. We believe in a merciful, a loving God who has a divine providence and wisdom for my cure, for my process. And when he answers our prayers, he answers it in, in light of what he has laid out for me. So the most important message I could give you today is that we need to give thanks. Uh, I know you're all still praying for me every day. Uh, I would ask you this week uh, until my next report, I would just ask you to offer the divine mercy and thanksgiving and thanksgiving for uh, the miracles that I've received, you know, starting with having absolutely no pain. Uh, the other little miracles are that I'm even, seems like I'm even responding better after chemotherapy each time. I'm stronger uh, as the weeks go on, and that's a good sign that my body's beginning to adapt. And finally, in thanksgiving, that God is allowing us to learn and remember that he has a plan. Let me just remind you the quote that you saw at the beginning. In all created things, discern the providence and wisdom of God. So in the created things of my own person, what is God's will and providence? And cancer is a part of that program right now. Um, also, I want to give him thanks for those things that are his and that I am blessed to be able to participate in. And blessed to participate in showing how his power is there in, in miraculous ways. So Friday, I will have 
an appointment with my doctor who will hopefully uh, teach me a little bit more about this impression from the scans. He'll be able to explain a little bit more what that means and maybe even a little bit more of what we're going to be uh, really looking for uh, in the next six treatments. So I'm going to continue with the treatments on Friday. It'll be treatment number one of the second set of six and we'll just continue to uh, go forth there. So hopefully uh, early next week I will be able to give you an update just simply sharing with you uh, what my doctor has to say. So this weekend uh, if you're looking for me uh, I will have all three masses, a vigil and two Sunday masses at St. Elizabeth Ann C. As I mentioned in the first part of this uh, video, I was a little bit disappointed uh, that there were still the tumors were still present and that uh, you know that I didn't get that miracle that I could just go on and just start growing my hair and you know get back to life. And so what that did to me and spiritually, uh, it, it caused me a little bit of emotional uh, and um, some anxiety about the next group of treatments. If Friday was going to be number seven of a series, I think I'd be okay. You know, I would just sit down in the chair and, and, and let them begin to give me the chemo. But because Friday is going to be the first of the second group of treatments, it kind of is a little bit harder for me to accept. It's almost like you're beginning over again. Yes, you know, made a lot of progress, you know, been blessed with decent health through this whole thing, but it's like committing again to start over. And the only thing I could think of in my prayer was I knew no matter what the results were, those seven, six more were coming. I wasn't sure I was going to handle it. But I realized immediately that it was going to be another type of perseverance and so you know of course I fell back on uh, Mother Seton who I look to all the time for uh, for help uh, you know I'm not only praying to her to intercede for me uh, in my health to be healed but to help me on the journey and so you saw the quote at the beginning um, Mother Seton reminds us that perseverance is a great grace and it's a grace that means that God draws himself closer to us when we need to be the strongest, in essence, when we're the weakest. She says, to go on gaining and advancing every day, we must resolute and bear suffering, as our blessed forerunners have done. So she's basically saying, look to the lives of all the saints. You know, the, the saints because they persevere to the end, but being able to be resolute in doing it day in and day out is how we imitate the life of the saints. So that's going to be my approach. My approach is going to be this again. It's just as if I never had any chemo at this point. I'm going to look at this as taking it one day at a time, I'm counting on the graces that God will give me and the examples of the saints. The best example that I could come up with uh, because of my love of, of the devotion of the Stations of the Cross, is when we find Jesus at the seventh station. At the seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. Now remember, between the two falls, between his first fall and this now the seventh station, he's received all the help that he's needed. He's received the help of Mary, he's received the help of Simon carrying the cross, and even the, the kindness and mercy shown by Veronica, who wipes his face. And these are things that have been happening to me, you know, that I've been carried by you and, and, and my great friendships that I have and those who are willing to continue to walk that part of my treatment with me. And all of a sudden, it's up to me again. It's up to me to make the choices to continue on because I find myself in that seventh station where I fall. 
So what I'd like to share with you is just what we use in every man's way, the cross. What is the seventh station and what are the words that Christ speaks to us? And what is our response to Christ? Because I will be using this uh, throughout, I'm sure, uh, the next six weeks to remind myself if I'm going to stay resolute uh, in day-to-day -day perseverance, it's going to be because Christ himself did on the cross. So let me just read to you uh, what we see on the seventh station in our own meditations each Lenten journey. Christ speaks, This seventh step, my other self, is one that tests your will. From this fall, learn to persevere in doing good. The time will come when all your efforts seem to fail and you will think, I can't go on. Then turn to me, my heavy laden one, and I will give you rest. Trust me and carry on. I prayed that as Jesus leading the Stations of the Cross for the past 35 years of my life. And every time I read that, I think how easy it is to get to that place where all of a sudden you've lost your vision and you have to be able to find that vision again to follow him. And then he says to you, come to me, my heavy laden one, and I will give you rest. In context of needing to persevere it is important because if we don't put it in that perspective, then what is there after perseverance is gone? It's despair. And that's where the cross becomes uh, detrimental instead of it becoming a grace-filled opportunity uh, to walk with Christ. And then our response in the station is one that I know off by heart and will probably be praying uh, constantly uh, just to myself. I'm in the car or in between treatments when I'm feeling so good and know I have to start over again. We hear our part as, Give me your courage, Lord, when failure presses heavily on me and I am desolate. Stretch out your hand to lift me up. I know I must not cease, but persevere in doing good. But help me, Lord. Alone there is nothing I can do. With you I can do anything you ask. I will. For me, that means more than just getting up and doing the treatments or going through the next stage of uh, the chemotherapy, because so many of you know someone or have yourself had to do that. It's deeper than that. It's going forth and doing what I am called to do, not just the chemotherapy, but being a priest. And the beautiful part about that is the eighth station is when Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. And it's really a moment of teaching for Jesus because he tells them, be concerned about your children. So what I hope to happen to me uh, looking at the seventh station, not only will I gain perseverance, but I will have the courage to continue on. Jesus' ministry is not over at this point. His greatest part of ministry is going to be what he shares with the women, what he speaks from the cross, and of course what he succeeds in his resurrection from the tomb. So until we get together earlier next week, uh, think about this station as a way that Christ calls us from a new beginning where it's hard to desire to do it again, but to have the courage and the resolute to do it day to day as Mother Seton says. Because that's what our forerunners did. And what do we always say? It's in times like these that saints are forged. So it's time for me and for you to become saints.